Okay, I'm, I am live. I am trying to, here, automatically adjust mic volume. Trying to adjust my mic volume because I am coughing today, but I did want to show you something that I'm working on. So I'm going to try to check this myself and see how the sound, how bad the sound is. So if you'll just bear with me a moment, I will do that. <clears throat> I got a cough last night. I have already been to the doctor because I already had an appointment. And um, she said, so far, it doesn't look like I already had an appointment. <coughs> Okay, I think that will be okay. I hope I don't cough too much. Uh, let's see. Okay, so hi everyone that drops by or comes in later. I didn't look to see who else was streaming right now. I just was, I started working on this project and I wanted to, I decided I wanted to share it as I go because someone's going to ask me later. Uh, if you if you subscribe to my channel or if you subscribe to Melody Made, her channel, we are collaborating on, um, hi Michelle Noel, nice to see you today. We are collaborating on making steampunk journals. And I decided today that I wanted to work on my cover. Cover, it's going to be very, um, not, the, not sure what word to use, interactive, let's put it that way. So I have an idea, and um, so that's what I've, I've started working on. Let me move this back just a little bit, and I'll show you what's happening. <clears throat> I'm going to use my, uh, I decided I'm going to use my classification folder ideas on both of my journals. And let me move out a little bit here so you can see. And, uh, but I'm going to cover them with canvas. And this is the canvas. And then I'm going to paint them so that I can uh, make them look sort of leathery or antique -y or whatever. Um, so it looks like some kind of fabric that's aged a little bit. So what I'm doing is I'm working on the canvas that's going to actually be the cover. So what I've done so far is I just, <coughs> excuse me, I just laid my, my whole cover out and traced around it so that I know exactly where things are going to go. Now, obviously, when I go back to do this, I'll turn it over and I'll do, work on the back side of this. So that's what I'm doing. I'm working on what my cover is going to be. Now, what I, what my idea is, so here would be, this is what it would look like, basically, and this would be folded down. So it's going to be, you know, about this big. So what I'm doing now is I want to put some items on here. So I'm, I'm stitching some things down to hold the items that I want to have on here. Now this is a little bitty bottle. Hi, Erna, right? I can barely see my screen. It's far enough away from Erna. Yeah, hi. Hi, everybody. So these are little bitty bottles. They have a little cork that comes out. And they're just really cute little tiny bottles. So I, my idea is I want to put these little bottles here with ink in them or something that looks like ink. I don't know if I'm going to seal it up or not. Depends. I mean, you know, it has a potential of making a mess, so I'll probably end up sealing it up. So, but it'll have something in there that looks like ink. And then they're going to go in these little pockets and sort of like this, and they'll stick up where you can see them, see the tops. Now, this is my idea. Hopefully, it's going to work. We'll find out. And then, um, so I'm going to have three rows, and these little ends will come down so they can't fall out. So, and then I want to have room, where did I put it? 
or some pin, like two, maybe two pinpoints. So they're, they'll, they'll have little pockets to go in also right here. And then there'll be something here. I'm not sure exactly what yet. And then the rest of my idea is I have a lot of old keys that were given to me. They're old and rusty looking. Hi, Arlene. Nice to see you. I thought I hadn't seen you in a while. Um, so there'll be some, some rusty keys. And these are like skeleton keys. And I want to make uh, some other little pockets sort of. I'm not sure if I'm going to do a strip like this where it's all in one or if I'm going to do single little pockets and they'll be going this way. So if I have so like if this was if this was my if this was my key, my key would go in this way and it had a little pocket over top of it. So part of the key would be sticking out and um, it can go. I'm not having decided yet which way it's going to go. If I if I do it so that the key point part goes in. Then I'll have, I could even hang stuff on the ends of these keys, but I haven't quite got that far yet. But I know I want to put keys on here. So my keys are probably going to come out to about here, this far, and they'll be going this way. And then um, down in this corner, um, I have a couple of different little pocket watch things. And um, I have a bigger one that's a real pocket watch. And then I have a smaller one that's like a necklace size, but it looks like a pocket watch. So whichever one it is, there's going to be a little like a triangular pocket here. And then it'll just slip down in there and I'll have it attached somehow with a chain or something so that it looks real steampunky. So that's my idea so far. So I started working on it and I thought, oh, I should I should uh, go ahead and show this because later on when I'm showing it on. Uh, um, on Friday on Melody's channel, then somebody's going to want to know how I did that. <laughs> Excuse me. Now I'm going to do two of these. And if you haven't been following, I have one is going to be a lady orientate, oriented one and the other one's going to be a man one. So um, they'll be similar, but a little bit different. So they're both going to be made. The, the cover's going to be made in a similar way. They'll have different things on them. I think the ladies is going to have the um, ink. And the men's have a lot of, of casing shells. So I might do something with those because they would work the same way, you know, slide down in and um, something or something like that. But um, we'll see. There are other things I could put in there, too. I could do them exactly the same, but um, I want them to be a little bit different. So right now, what I'm doing is, and let me go back closer now. Uh, where am I? Got to stop thinking about what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so we can get a little bit closer so you can see what I'm doing. There we go. Now who knows where it really is, but we'll I'll try to keep track of staying in the screen there. So so what I've done so far, like I said, is I've drawn out the um, the cover. This is the front cover that I'm working on right now is this area here. <coughs> and I've started stitching down the um, the little um, slots for the bottles to fit in. So all I did was took a strip, determined, you know, like I started with this in with this end pinned and then I put the bottle in there and then I uh, while this was pinned and I tightened it down you know so that it will hold it in while making sure everything stay this part stays flat so that it will hold it in and then I drew a line here see so I know where to stitch so that's what I'm doing now I've got uh I've only got one stitch down so far I'm working on the second one so I'm going to turn this around to where I can hold it. So there's going to be a little bit of handwork on here. And once I'm all done, then I will paint it after after it's after the cover is attached to the after the fabric is attached to the cover, then I will paint it and um, be able to do some. Um, some faux finishes type stuff on there, I hope, or at least something that I like, you know with browns and tans and rusts and stuff. 
So all I'm doing here is I drew the line. So I'll be able to, I have a line here. So I know how, where the straight edge is, should be. And then I have a line on this that shows me where I'm stitching. And then I have guidelines here that show me where that's supposed to go. So here's one I already did. That's all stitched. And I drew those lines while the little containers were in there. I pinned them, pinned it in place so I could make sure that they fit securely. And I, I did it as tight as I could. So, you know, to make sure they'll stay in. Now, I know from using this canvas before, this canvas is, um, it's sort of like a uh, drop cloth, but it came from a factory where they used canvas to make, I'm not sure what they made. I know they made filters and different things like that, but I'm not sure what they used the canvas for. So this is off cuts from that factory. Um, and I know when it gets wet, it's, I don't make anything out of it that has to be washed because when it gets wet, it tightens up quite a bit and um, it won't be the same size as I started with. And it also stiffens up quite a bit. So, I mean, this is, this is already pretty stiff, you know, it's pretty stiff. And it's not going to get softer, not just by washing it one time anyway. It might if you washed it several times. Um, but uh, the experience I've had is that it kind of stiffens up, which is great if you're just using it to paint on or like if you're making a pencil case or something out of it, because it just gives it a lot more stability. But if you have something that needs to be softer, it doesn't work. I have to use something different for that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let me cough here for a second. <coughs> I really think I'm getting uh, bronchitis, but nothing's shown up yet. All right, so. So basically, this is what I'm doing. So I'm gonna, I just gotta stitch these three down, and then um, I'll need to uh, measure out the next part and see how it's to fit before I can start painting anything, or you know, attach it to the book. <coughs> So did everybody have a nice Easter celebration? Did you get to celebrate? Did you have to sit around at home by yourself? Or what did you do? We actually made it to church early Sunday morning. And then our daughter and her family came over. There's three of them. So they were here all day. That was nice. I've been so busy lately that we haven't done that much together. So we mostly ate and watched TV and watched the Keisha sale and made, um, my husband decided he had to have some homemade um, corn dogs. So fortunately, I'd already bought the stuff to make them. So we had to drag all that out. And I wasn't that impressed with them. <laughs> they were a little too greasy. Of course, he's the one that cooked them. So that might have been part of the problem. But, but you know, I wasn't that impressed. Isn't that something funny to have on Easter? Corn dogs? We were just going to have sandwiches because I didn't want to cook. And they didn't either, so we just decided we'd have sandwiches. When there's just five of you, it's pretty easy to decide those things eat like that. Oddball stuff, you know. I'm really having fun working on this journal. Both of them, actually. I haven't done a steampunk before. So it's always fun to do something new. And I'm having a, a lot of fun doing it with someone else, with Melody. So it's, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. 
One, two, three. Okay, so I'm going to have three little bottles. I have more little bottles than that, but I think that's enough. And then I thought about putting a pinpoint, I mean, a, um, I'm going to have the pinpoints. I thought about having a, a pin holder also, and I think I might, I might have at least one I can use on here. I see you, Bella. Too early for you to be whining. Oh, my word, this morning before my husband left. Hi, JL. Before my husband left for work this morning, the dog had just come in. He just left the dog in. And he said, Bella, what have you got out here? And went out and looked, and it was a baby rabbit. I don't know if she found it out there, if she killed it, or what she's a schnauzer. I mean, that's their, you know, that's what their breed does. They go to ground for things. But uh, it, it wasn't mangled or anything, but she had picked it up. So I don't know if she found it that way or what. He said, well, he had seen some rabbits out there the other day. So when I got ready to go to the doctor this morning, I let her out and back in pretty quickly. I wasn't even, you know, thinking about rabbits. And when I got back home, I let her out and then I went outside and sat for a little bit because it was so nice and sunny while she played. And all of a sudden I realized, where is she? And um, she started kind of not barking, but sort of almost whining. And I thought, uh-oh. So I looked over there, and sure enough, there was another little bunny. He was still hopping around. So I don't know if she thought he, he would be fun to play with <laughs> or what, but I made her leave it alone. He finally hopped off, but I have a feeling there's a nest right there someplace in the yard where she could get to. So we're going to have to watch for the next few days. And we're still waiting to hear about the puppies. We haven't heard anything yet. So hopefully everything's going to go well for that little mama. I'm probably not in the camera. Okay, sorry. I almost forgot, forgot to watch. Forgot to watch. I wasn't sure they were going to let me in at the doctor's office this morning because there was a big sign on the door that said, if you have a cough or blah, 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 call this number. Well, the gal was sitting there at the reception area, so I just stood in the doorway and told her, you know, that I had a little cough that started last night, but I didn't know what she wanted me to do. So they had to discuss it first before I ever went in. But thankfully, I got went ahead and got, got in. We've been without a primary care physician for a year almost. So all my meds and everything else have expired. You know, have, I don't have. So I had to get all my prescriptions. I thought I was going to get away with not taking some of them, but I think she's added one. <laughs> uh, I don't like having to take medicine. Okay, now let's see. So, and two, once once this is painted, like I said, it's going to stiffen up a little bit. So if I have any raw edges, like over here, they're going to stiffen up and, um, I'll see, I was going to do this. They're going to stiffen up and uh, the paint's really going to seal the edges so they don't, you know, um, unravel pretty much. So these next ones I'm stitching are just for the little pin points, pin nibs. I call them pin points. I don't know why. For the pin nibs. Our weather today is so nice. Oh, it's, I'm so pleased. I'm so tired of gloomy weather. I put the hummingbird feeders out yesterday, but I only put three out. Usually we have like six or eight of them but it's 
early yet, so I don't want to make all that bird food and just have it sit out there and spoil. So we'll start with three. We usually have three little families every year. And then uh, at the end of the season, we get like for a week as they're coming through, going wherever they're going north or I mean south or whatever they're doing. We have, oh, oh gosh, like 20 of them. And that's really cool to sit out and watch them. They're fun to watch. And then we have the regular bird feeders out there and we have a lot of different little birds. They're, they're fun to sit and watch. So it's just a beautiful day today. Our, all the pear trees are budding or um, blooming, I mean, and it's windy. So it looks, it, when I came home from town, it looked like it was snowing because there's so many Bradford pear trees and they were all, uh, the wind was blowing the petals. I mean, the uh, yeah, the flower petals around. So it looked like big flakes of snow. Hi, Melody. How you doing? I'm working on my cover. Stitching these little things down. I was going to work on it and then I thought, oh, I was like you with the, what you were doing the other day with your book, with your cover. I thought, oh, I better show this because that's going to be a big, long explanation if I don't. <laughs> so I'm just kind of trying it, seeing what's going to happen. I think it's going to work the way I want it to. I'm trying not too much or too loud because if I do, I'll start coughing. So. Bella's not afraid to talk. She's over here talking. Bella, go play. Go on and play. It's not time yet. She's already fussing at me. Because I've been gone all morning. And haven't paid her any attention, hardly. And I'm leaving on the back here. You'll see I've got these. If you could see that, I've got these long strings. I'm leaving, not real long, but, you know, I'll just glue those later to make sure they don't even come loose. It's not going to matter. You're not going to see it underneath. So look, Melody, I've got these are my little ink bottles. That I'm going to put fake ink in. So they're going to go in. This is the, it goes like this. This is the front of the book. So these are going in here. I got place for three of those. And then I'm going to have a place for two. I might cut a little slit there. I haven't decided. I better decide that now, I guess. I think I'm going to cut a little slit so that, no, nope, I better I better put them all the way in. Anyway, they're going to go in there some way. We'll see. Might have to cut a little slit so they'll fit right. So this is the ladies because she's going to have the ink stuff on hers. This is about all I've done so far, so we haven't missed too much. I've lost my thread. Here it is. And I've lost my needle. I always do that. Oh, come on. Needle, needle, needle. Where'd you go? Here it is on the floor. That's where everything lands. All right. <laughs> and I'm just using um, this, since this is kind of heavy, I'm using hand quilting thread. I like using hand quilting thread. It's really strong and I could actually have done, I, I used a double thread, but I could have just used a single thread um, on those little pockets, but I'm just using a single one on, on the piece I'm doing now. And I could have done this on the machine, but I just thought it would look more, you know, steampunky <laughs> by hand. 
Let me get these out of the way. Oops. So I'm just using a single thread for these. Um, pin, pin nibs. I really hope this isn't the start of bronchitis because I really don't want to be sick right now. <laughs> Done really good not being sick this past year. And I don't want to start now. Dr. Always also wanted me to get a COVID shot. We'll see about that. And I'm just taking little uh, back stitches on here so that it's nice and secure. I don't know, it's probably gonna be hard to see with the, oh, there, there you can see it. See how the stitches look. They're, they look thick and that's the way I want them to look. So it kind of looks like leather or something, you know. Hi, Riri. How are you today? I just wanted to do something relaxing, and I thought this would be relaxing today. Not that I don't have a lot of other stuff I should be doing, but you know, some days you just gotta do it. Yeah, the bottle holders. And, um, you know, I, I've decided to use my um, uh, classification folder covers for both of them. So I think they're both, they're gonna be similar. They're both gonna have this canvas, but they're gonna have different things on them. So, um, you know, I have a lot of shell casings like this. It's just, it's, an, it's a spent shell. It's already been used. So there's no bullet inside it, it's just a casing. So I'm trying to think of something cool I could use for his, for the guy's side. I'm not sure yet but it will fit the same way. Just happens to be the same size. <coughs> so they're both gonna, both gonna have things on the front, just probably be some different things or might be some alike, but basically different. I worked on my signatures a little bit. I'm doing okay, Riri. You know what? Every morning I get up and my feet hit the floor. I think I'm doing pretty good. <clears throat> Some days I have to talk myself into the idea, but <laughs> most of the time <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Here's a, here's a tip. Anytime you're doing something like this with sewing, I don't care if it's beading, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I don't care if it's beading or something like this, or, you know, anytime you're doing a little project that has sewing involved, don't just start. See, I could have started here and just kept on going without knotting my thread until I got to the end of what I was doing. I could have easily done that. But I've knotted it at the end of each line, beginning and end of each line. That way, if a string breaks somewhere along the way, uh, it's not going to affect everything. And that's that's also important when you're doing beadwork because um, beads, well, the kind of beads I use most of the time are glass. Crystals have sharp edges. They will cut thread 
just from wear and tear, just from moving a little bit across the thread. It's like you take a piece of cut glass and move it across, you know, a piece of thread and it's going to cut it. So you have to think about that when you're sewing, especially if you're making uh, like bracelets and necklaces and stuff. If you're if if everything you do is one thread and it, there's never a knot or you know you never end it off anywhere then if one thread breaks everything's going to fall apart so i always try to make sure that my clasps are uh, stitched separately in other words they have their own knotting from one end to the other so if a clasp breaks which is you know that's it's kind of the most usual place, I think, where you're going to get some breakage. And, you know, it doesn't mean it's a, a bad job or somebody does, hasn't done a good, done good work making it. It's just the nature of the thing, you know, just like paper. Paper's going to tear at some point and, and disintegrate. But um, so you kind of take precautions. You try to use special threads that, that aren't... Uh, you know, they don't have to worry about being abrasive against it as much, different beading wire and different kinds of things. But um, you just if you plan ahead and just put in a few safety features, then in the long run, you'll be a lot happier. I'd much rather somebody bring me a bracelet to repair that just has a clasp that's fallen off and everything else is intact and not loose than something that's lost 10 beads and I don't have any way to replace them. So it's never gonna look the same as when whoever made it designed it. So that's just tip for the day. Put plenty of knots. <laughs> so once I get to the end of this piece, I can clip this off and that part will be finished. Then I have to, and then I, I guess I'm gonna have to go over and get my keys. I wonder where they are. I have to think about where they are because I haven't had them out. Either that or the pocket watch or something. Let's see what I'm going to do next. Trying to decide what to do up in this little corner beside these. Uh, oops. Beside these uh, little ink things. I'm wondering if I could put the pin there. Oh, what am I doing? So this looks pretty ugly right now, but bear in mind it's going to um, it's going to have some um, paint on it, different kinds of paint and stuff on it. I wonder if I've got anything in here. This is kind of what I was thinking, only not this one. I'm going to have to see if I can find a cheap one somewhere so that, you know, I haven't thought about putting it on the end, but I'm not sure about that yet. This is where the pinpoints, this is the holder the pinpoints go in. So we're going to have, I'm going to have pinpoints in here. <clears throat> so I could, and I'm going to have my my watch down here, watch or something down here in this little corner. And my keys will be over here. Nope, that won't fit. So I could, I could put this up here, make another little holder right here for that. And then have this little end included in the little so that it will stick down in the little pocket. Hi, Barb. So let me see, where's my stuff I had? Oh, here it is. No, that's the other one. Oh, here it is. So let's see if I make a circle, I want it huge. Use this. I really need a straight edge. The other thing is, whenever I do this, I am trying to.
keep my edges so they can be frayed. I don't want to have to turn them under. And I'm going to scoop this back a little bit now that I'm um, farther away. I need to be farther away. Okay. Okay, so um, I want to use a straight edge that I can fringe. So what I've been doing, what I did with this, is I cut the piece first and then I fringed the edges until it was even and then I trimmed off all the fringe so that I have a nice uh, little fringy, these little fringes up here at the top. <coughs> so let's see how this will work. Let me just... Can't see what I'm doing. Sorry, <laughs> got a bit of stuff. There we go. So I'm gonna put the bottom line on a bottom edge on the line so that it's straight on that line. And I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna line my ruler up here with this line and down here with the same line. And then I'm just gonna do this. Now that's about as straight as I can start out with because you know, fabric, uh, the way fabric is woven, sometimes it gets skewed a little bit. So I'm gonna cut along here first, just along this line that I drew. That's for all practical purposes is perpendicular to the edge, to the selvage edge. So I know that that edge is straight. I'm just trimming that off. I'm not throwing this away because I like to stamp on these and use them for different things. And then I'm just going to take this and how big do I want it? Is that really what I want to do? Uh, I'm just going to make me a square. I don't want the little pocket to be very big because what I have to go in it isn't terribly big. So, and I don't care that I'm writing on the fabric because it's going to be painted over. So that's not a big deal. So I want this edge, which I can't see what I'm doing. I want this edge. That still might be, no. I was going to say that still might be too big, but. If it is, I could just adjust it. I want that to be a little rounder than that. Okay. These are my good sewing scissors. I love these things. These are gingers. I'm not gingers. These are um, Guggenheims. Guggenheims. I like them really well. And I'll cut through probably ten layers of this of this uh, uh, fabric. This um, I call it canvas. And it's just like cutting through butter with these things. You have to be careful because they don't have so much drag because they're so sharp. All right, so. <laughs> How's weather up there, Barb? You still pretty cold? So now I'm going to trim the selvage off because I don't want that line down there. I'm going to look at this to see what I think of it. So I want this, see that's too big. I want this to come here. Let me see if I have my watch in here. I think I do so I can check the sizing. Gosh, I've got so much stuff in here. Melody, why'd you make me get all this stuff out? That's what I want to know. <laughs> and I'll tell you what's going to happen. The watch isn't going to be in here. Oh, no, there's one. There's the other one. So, see, I got I got two sizes. I could use, could use a watch, the little watch on hers, and put like a, oh, that's what I'm going to do. 
because I really wanted a watch to be on both of them. And I've got these um, little things. Yeah, I can hang that on her watch. Oh, that would be so cute. Here's the bigger watch. So is mine. You would not believe it. I've got a lot of little watchy things in here. That's cute. That's cute. Here's the one I was thinking of for his. That's pretty good size. That's, uh, how big is this? That's two, almost two inches. And then here's the smaller one. Where did it go? Here's the smaller one. And they're both where you can, I think, I thought you could put stuff in them. Maybe not. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know. It looks like looks like you might could. Let's see what I can find here. I poke myself. Nope, maybe not. Either way, I still like it. Still like it. Oh, that would fit perfect. Perfectly. I took that stem off. I could just set that right on here. I don't know. But anyway, that's the idea, you know, to have this little uh, place down here where you could stick this pocket in. But my but really, I was thinking like this, so you so it would half stick out is what I was thinking. And I will do that for sure on the men's. Now for the women, since it's smaller, I know that for sure for the men's. I'm happy with that idea. <coughs> since the women, here are the other jar, little jars I had. But see how big they are compared to these? They're really a lot bigger. So I don't, I'm not using those. Here's some keys, but I don't know if I, I don't know if I want to use something like these keys or some real keys because I have real keys. I think the real keys would be cooler. What do you think? They're 52. Well, wow, that's nice. <laughs> what do you think? Use these keys or real keys, real skeleton keys, which I have. So those are the watches that I have. And I think I like this idea. So I think hers might not even have a pocket. Uh, well, almost needs one, doesn't it? Maybe hers could just have a little, a little pocket at the bottom. That would work. A little square pocket. And then it could just sit down in here and also have some dangles with it. Need some help here, guys. You're not helping me. But real keys. Yep, I think so. I have to dig them out. They're somewhere. I'll have to dig out the real keys. And they're rusty too, so I'll have to I'll have to coat them with something. What are these? The guys, um, <coughs> excuse me. The man's book, he's going to have some, hopefully going to have some uh, mechanical bugs in his. These are cool. Might use them somehow, I don't know. Not quite on the theme, but 
Let me get these out of the way. These are teeny tiny little keys. They're really cute. And I like this idea. So this little pocket, I mean, this little guy, this is for the bigger one. Where'd he go? There he is. So I'll save him for that, for the, for the guys. And then ladies, I sure wish I could get that open. Still think it'll come open somehow. Sure looks like it would, but it just, Okay, don't mom, don't anybody get scared. Oh, oh, oh. I feel that. It feels loose. Oh, it's coming open. Yahoo! Look at that. I'm excited. So I could put a watch face inside there. Or something, whatever. Look at that. Oh, I'm so glad I looked at that again. Yay! Now I wonder if the big one comes open. You would think so. Yeah, I think so. Yep. Look at that! Yippee! Hooray! Okay, I'm excited. <laughs> Goodbye, Arlene. Thanks for coming by. Okay. That excites me. So let's get some of this out of the way. Little tiny keys. Okay. You know, I'm, I'm chomping at the bits to paint this, but I can't paint it yet. <coughs> I have to wait. That's what I want to do right now. Paint. Paint my cover. I can't paint it until I've got everything on there where it's going to be. It can all be painted. And I might use the airbrush because I'll get in all the little nooks and crannies that I'll have. Alrighty. So see, I'm thinking. And that's a crummy. So here's a little teapot. I don't know. Do you think that'll be too much on the front? Still think I want this. So this is going to have to be. Something's going to have to change. <coughs> so this will just be a little pocket down here. It's not going to be that tall. But a little pocket down here. So this can just barely fit in there so it won't be hanging all over the place or jangling around. And then if I put this up here, sorry guys, I'm thinking out loud. See you, Melody. Melody, I don't know what time, uh, oh no, I'll probably be back in time for tomorrow for your, your uh, stream. I was thinking I was going to be gone longer, but I don't think I will. So we could do like this. Have the little pocket for the watch. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> or something, I'm not sure. Somehow, something down here. And this little teapot is probably going to end up on the end. But I could I could use could use one of those. But it's gonna have a little chain. I'll, I'll put a a little chain from up here, so it's like a little pocket watch on a chain. So I can hang some things along the chain that aren't very big and won't be banging around too much. So so that's the idea for that. Yay! So this needs to be put on somehow. 
I still want room for my keys. I don't want everything to be going in the same way. That's why I wanted to put the keys this way. So if I had the watch in here, how much room do I have for the keys? They could go right here. So I could put at least two keys there. That would work. All right. Got to think these things out. So I got to find a pin holder because I don't want to give that one up because I like that one. And um, see, I thought about using that. Oh, it's not in there. Where is it? You know, they have those glass pin holders. Yeah, it is in here. I didn't think it was in here. Let me show you this. I don't know if you've seen one before. It's kind of dirty. This is a, a, this is glass. It's all glass. This is usually whatever color this glass. Mine happens to be clear. Sometimes they're colors or whatever. It's just got ink on it right now. That's why it looks like that because it hadn't been cleaned off. But you dip it in the ink just like you do a normal pen. You write with it just as you do a normal pen. And all these little grooves in here carry that ink. And as you use it, it comes off the point. So I thought about putting one of these in there because you can get them pretty cheap nowadays. But I'm trying to stick with using what I've got. So mostly. So I don't think I'll do that. But I did think about it. Now, the other thing is I could make well, that's another idea, depending on how detailed I want to get. I could make a pin holder. Could even do that. All right. So now, uh, so I want this. To, I'm going to stitch this all the way over here because it's, or am I? What am I going to do? I put a pin up here. Let me find something big enough to let's just do this because it's big enough. I want it to be, so this is, this is the edge of the front of the book, so I don't want to get too far over there, but I think this is what I want to do right here. So this is how I figured out how to do the, how to make the, um, the little holders. I put the, the little bottles down like this. I made sure they were straight, and I took my ruler and laid it up against there so that it's straight with the cover. And then I just drew a, and straight over here. And I just drew a line here and here and here. So I have my guideline. So that's the first line. And then I pinned that. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> so then I pinned this. That looks crooked to me. It is. Straighten it out. No, that's okay. It's okay. So then I pinned it here to hold that side in place. And I could have went ahead and stitched it before I do the next side. And that probably would work pretty, would work even better, I'm thinking. But so I'm just pinned that right on that line so it will hold it exactly where it's supposed to be. I'm going to scoot this over right up to where I have to keep this fabric flat because if I start doing this and pulling it up, it's not going to fit. So I keep that fabric flat. I still have my little guideline here. So I know the edge of my fabric has to go along that guideline. <coughs> I've got my pin over here in place where it's supposed to be. So I'm just laying that all flat, keeping this on the line. And then I'm going to take my ruler again because it's just easy to do it this way. And as I'm holding this, I'm sort of snugging that ruler up to the side of the thing and then making sure it's all straight on the line. I'm not too worried about it being the exact size of whatever Pen I'm going to put in there. I don't think or think about that. Let's go with something a little smaller. So all I'm going to do is tighten that down. 
Okay. Now I can just kind of push that back with my pen. So I'll draw the line again in the guideline. So I know exactly where to stitch. <coughs> So let me stitch this down and that part will be finished as far as stitching goes. I'm sorry, am I boring you to death with all this? <laughs> Lost my needle again. I don't know why I do that. There it is. Still attached. Okay, this time I'm going to double my thread again because I want it to be strong. Because if something gets put in and out of that little slot, then it'll, have, it'll hold up. The other thing I want to do, there's my little scissors. I want to make the slits before I do anything else. I want to make the slits for my pinpoints. Now, how am I going to accomplish this? I'm not really sure. Let's see if I can do this. Here we go. I'm just cutting a little slit in the middle of this pocket and the middle of the next pocket. I'm calling them pockets. What do they call? What should I be calling these? I can't even think. What it should be slots, I guess is what they are. I'm being real careful not cut cut, cut through to the through the back. So this is why I did that. Where's that pin again? So they can go like this. They'll fit in a little pocket like that. Instead of sticking it up at the top like this. I'm just gonna stick them in that little pocket. All right, so let me do these two right quick. And then I'll do the bottoms and that part will be done. Go this way. This fabric's thick. You have to kind of get it out of your way in order to see what you're doing. Has anybody been to the show lately? Is there even any anything on worth seeing? I mean, I can imagine that the Movie people are probably, the studios are probably not wanting to waste their money putting stuff out when they're not going to have a big audience. You know, they'll want to wait until lots of people can come. So I wondered if there was even anything worth watching right now. I haven't been paying attention. I used to go to the show all the time with my sister-in-law. We were movie buddies, and we haven't been in a year. Since it's all started, we haven't been. I kind of miss that. We like to go see the superheroes and all that. I guess the last thing we saw was the, the final... Um, who are they? <laughs> Thor and all those guys, you know, Ultraman and all that, whatever they are. So that's been a while. Goodness, I think I had a bruise on my hand. 
So the excitement around our house the last few days, we got groceries delivered last Friday, I think it was. And I was putting all the canned goods away in the pantry. We have a little pantry with a few shelves in it. So I'm putting all the canned goods away in there and I closed the door. And as soon as I closed the door, two shelves collapsed. So I had nothing broke. Well, one thing did break a jar of a, a canning jar full of dog treats, which were probably needed to go in the trash anyway, because they were so old. But other than that, nothing broke, thankfully. And um, the upshot is, the good thing is that now my husband's going to put me in some rollout shells. Yeah, I'm so happy. But he's working a lot right now at his retirement job. <laughs> and uh, so I don't know exactly when he's going to get it done. So we put the shells back up and I loaded them back up again. And those little peg things that fit in the sides of the cabinet is what broke. So we got some new ones and put that in for now until he's already got the stuff. He just needs the time to build the shelves and all. He's such a handy guy. So I'm kind of excited about that. I can't see what's in there half the time anyway, so this will be nice. I'll be able to see stuff. I won't have to say, dear, would you please come and get this off of the shelf for me? Not that I'm that short. I'm 5'6", but he's 6'2", so you know, he can get the stuff off the top shelf that I don't even know is up there. <laughs> I got flour the other day, and... Uh, I had him looking for some cornmeal because I knew I had two bags of cornmeal that I'd bought. I had ordered one and he had picked one up. So we didn't know each other was doing that. So we have extra cornmeal, that's for sure. But I needed um, flour. I mean, I needed cornmeal. So when he was getting the cornmeal down, he says, well, you've got all kinds of cornmeal. I says, I know. Remember when? Blah, blah, blah. He says, plus you've got two bags of flour up here. And I'm thinking, oh, great, two bags of flour. And I just got another one <laughs> because I can't see what's up there. It gets pushed back where I can't see it or reach it or anything. So maybe this will be helpful for that situation. I've been crocheting a lot. Been working on it. I've done a lot of flowers, but I've also been working on some uh, lace and small doilies and stuff to put in this in the uh, craft vendors market. I just do that when I'm upstairs, so I have something to do. I mean, you know, really need to do some other stuff, but I mean, like when I'm sitting there and I'm tired and I don't want to do anything else, I have something to do when I'm sitting. <laughs> well, my husband, I have to say, he is very talented in woodworking. He has made a lot of the furniture in our house. We have a really cool bedroom set that he made. The um, the, in, the nightstands or end table or end stands or whatever you want to call them. They look like jelly cupboards with punch tin. And then the it's a queen size bed and it has slats on the headboard. <coughs> and it's all whitewashed wood and it, it looks very nice i really like it and all of our uh coffee tables and benches and dining table stuff like that he's made so i'm very fortunate he i mostly can tell him what size and show him a picture 
and he'll make something similar to it. Not always exact because he gets his own ideas, but you know, <laughs> I don't complain. <coughs> I knew what you meant, Barb. I did catch that, but I knew what you meant, so I didn't say anything. <laughs> So, this is going to look so neat, I think. I'm really tickled with how it's working. So, now I'm just going to cut this and leave a little bit, slightly fringe it, and then once it's painted, it will. Um, Stiffen up and it should be fine. I might put some fray check on it. I might do that just to be sure. But I, I think, you know, I don't want it to look pristine perfect with the way I want to finish it. That one's a little big. I'm going to trim it too. And we're going to see. Now, you know, the biggest worry when you're doing something like this is that you forgot that you're going to flip it over and turn it upside down or whatever. But I think I did it okay. Really checked it. And where's my glue? I'm going to put a little bit of, <coughs> excuse me, a little bit of uh, Fabri-Tac inside the top parts of this i think if i can get some in there so that that part will be closed oh yeah i still got to do the bottoms so i'm just gonna kind of slide that in hopefully squirt a little bit of glue in there nope Hopefully I got enough. I just need enough to tack it down. Okay, so here, whoops, so here we are. Let's try this and see how it might look. Let's see how it might look. I had more than enough fabric here. I just I just didn't trim it yet. Where's the line? Now this will come over, you know, like this. And then it'll be shorter than this. And then the um <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> Sorry. The um, inside cover will cover the edges. So it's going to be something like this. Once it's glued down, it'll be nice and smooth, or as smooth as canvas gets, you know. Okay, so now. Oh. 
All right, now we can pretend that that's all where it's supposed to be. <laughs> I'm just going to look at the front. Just to test, just to test. Do not adjust your screen. All right, that's close enough. You get the idea. So these will be in here. Oh, I still haven't sold these down. I'm going to do that. And we'll have a couple of these. I actually have some fake ones that are shiny silver. And I also have some little black ones that are old that aren't any good anymore. <clears throat> Okay, and then this is going to go put that right there. Maybe with a chain or a ribbon, a few other little things. And then that leaves room for, I could put two keys here. Or this could actually have its own little pocket because that's going to stay, I think. I could put something right here, just one little loop. So, you know, I don't want to put elastic because then that, oh, I know what, uh, a ribbon tie. That would work great. A little ribbon that could tie in a little bow right there. And then this will be here, I think. some kind of little pocket there. So he'll just kind of snug in here. So then I have to figure out where the, oh, I know what, the um, pocket could actually attach, you know, a little chain on here and then attach it to this pocket so that it could be taken out and looked at. But it'll just be attached right here. That way it's not such a big long chain. And I could still put little charms on the chain. And then if I still want to put uh, keys here, what do I do with those? I don't know if that's going to be too much on there or, I mean, you know, I want it to look real, real um, mechanically, mechanical. But I want it to look girly, too, because this is the girls. So I'm just going to use these as an example. I wanted the keys to go right here. I think I would probably want, would want these to show. I'd want the pretty ends to show. Whichever end is pretty, I'd want the pretty ends to show. Do I want that or not? What do you think about the keys? Still put the keys on? Is that too much? I don't know. Hi, Lisa's. Lisa. Lisa's. Lisa. I don't know. Is, are the keys going to be too much? I don't know. I kind of like them. I remember there'll be probably a chain with some little charms on here. Maybe a little teacup or something, and one of these, one of these on the little chain. It's attached here, so that'll be in that little pocket. So there, <coughs> and it has to have a closure. 
the closure will be, there'll be um, two eyelets, one here and one here, that, that a ribbon or, la or a uh, leather or ribbon or something will come out of those eyelets and they will tie, they'll come out here and they'll come out at the back and they will tie right here. So, I don't know, I still like the idea of putting them on there, putting the keys on there. I need to decide before I... I need to decide before I paint it and before I put it on the book. I think that I'll, I won't do this part right here just now until I get the keys, the actual keys out and see what I think about them. Because they'll probably be a little bit more bulky. These are flattened out. They'll probably be more bulky than this because this will be twice as wide, sort of. So I'll wait till I see those. But that's, that's I think I'm still going to put the keys. But let me go ahead and get this stitched on. Let's see how big it's going to be. I don't want it huge because then it'll fall out. So I'm thinking kind of like that. Lost my pencil again. I'm losing too many things today. Here it is. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> oh, goodness sake. Sorry about that. So I can kind of control how uh, tight I want the pocket to be. Okay, so it's going to be like this. Now, is that going to, come here, you. Is that going to hold it enough? Of course, if it falls out, it'll be on a chain. So, yeah, I think that'll work about right. Okay. Whoa, 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 don't break. There's one piece and the other piece is way over there. I have two of them in case it broke, but I don't think it did. So I'm not going to crawl under the table right now to get it. All right, so I'm going to take this out. Take these out. Take this out. I'll do this because I need to. Okay, that was a pretty good test. It's, where it's coming out. It's coming along. It's coming along pretty much the way I want it. So that's always a good thing. Okay, that one stays open. Those are thick. That one gets stitched at the bottom. So you know, stitch the bottoms right here. Jane and Sherry. Welcome. I'm working on my steampunk journal cover. So with some stitching on canvas that will then be later be attached to my card or to my uh, folder that I'm using and then painted. This canvas paints up really well. I've used it a lot on journals. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with these, I think if I turn it this way, it'd be better. Mm -mm. I want to close up the bottoms. So what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut that off right there. And all I'm going to do is just put like a little pinch pleat in it. I love this quilting thread, but it has such a tendency to not stick together. I don't want to use wax because I'm going to be painting it. And uh, But the thread is is uh, has such a good body to it. Sometimes it helps if you stretch it, but it has such a good body to it, it doesn't want to stick together, see? So every time you do something, it has a tendency to want to tangle. 
Okay. Just going to do the bottoms of their pinpoints first, nibs first. Saskatoon. Saskatoon. That'd be a fun place to say you live. Where are you from? Saskatoon. <laughs> Sounds better than Farmington. <laughs> So all I'm going to do now is just, um, maybe I should just go ahead and okay, I have to decide, do I want to cut this here and cut it here and just take out this whole piece or leave that in like it could be a little pocket for something? I guess a pocket for something. It's already there. Might as well. So I'm going to start all the way over here. I can find it. <coughs> and just going to do a little same kind of stitch all the way across the bottom here of this little section. Eleven centigrade. Thanks, you guys, it, for coming to the sale over the weekend. It was pretty much fun. I always like to see y'all there. It was crazy here Sunday afternoon when my sale was going on. It was all I could do to see what was happening. I had last minute company, which was our kids. <clears throat> Well, they were here. They were watching pickleball on TV, which was pretty exciting. <laughs> and then uh, my husband decided he wanted corn dogs. We were going to have sandwiches. He decided he wanted corn dogs. So I had to do all that. And uh, the dog was crazy Sunday, wanting in and out. And it was just like, <laughs> and I was, I was so tired Monday. I told my husband, I think I'm, I think I'm like the dog. Anything that's out of our routine, it just it wears me out. <coughs> it doesn't stop and catch my breath. This is what I call grunt work. You have to do this before you get to do the part you want to work really do, which right now I'm wanting to paint. <coughs> I want to paint the cover. But you got to do the grunt work first. What I'm doing is, um, like I said, I'm kind of doing a big running stitch just so it looks like it has hand stitching on there. But this canvas is heavy and I'm only going through two layers, but still my already my thumb thumb's getting sore. So what I'm doing is I will find my spot and then I push my needle on the table and that saves me a little bit of wear and tear. Have you and Sherry ever actually gotten together face to face or did you not meet until COVID started? Barb. <clears throat> this would have been a lot faster if I'd done it on the sewing machine, but I don't think I would have liked it as much. On the machine. Be strong enough to hold some big butt pin nibs, that's for sure. <laughs> this canvas is so heavy. <laughs> I 
I've never been to can well, I say I've never been to Canada. I've been to Canada twice. Each time was for about an hour. One time, the last time was uh, two, three, three years ago. We rode um, up there <coughs> from Missouri. We rode up there on a motorcycles, six, six of us. And we crossed the border and went into the little welcome center and stayed there for, we were there for about an hour, turned around and came back. Because we were far enough away from our, from our lodging that um, we couldn't stay much longer than that. And, um, but it was, you know, and then the other time was many, many years ago, I went on a shopping excursion with a bunch of women where we flew, where did we fly into? Toronto? No, where did we fly into? Somewhere just over the border and we shopped at the airline uh, place. And then we flew back. <laughs> Wasn't that stupid? <laughs> I still have what I bought though. I bought a pair of red leather earrings and a pin that, that matched them. I wear them once in a while, but not too often. And that's my extent of going to Canada. <coughs> now I've been to Mexico several times. Of course, my husband, he's been to Hong Kong and uh, Philippines and all that when he was in the Navy during Vietnam. He said he liked Hong Kong. I gotta think about how I'm gonna do this. Let's see. Let me take these out because I think I'm just gonna put like one little stitch in the middle there. Call it done. Because that's all it really needs. I want these to stick up about that far. So See how this works. Just need something to close up the bottom of the little pocket. Wedding's getting closer, May 1st, so I've got to finish those dresses this week. Got five bridesmaids' dresses that have alterations and one wedding gown. Just haven't been what I've wanted, been wanting to do, so I've kind of been putting it off a little bit more than I should. They'll be done in plenty of time, but you know. I didn't want to wait till the last minute, and here I am waiting till the last minute. I'm sorry, I'm trying not to talk very loud, so I don't lose my voice. <coughs> Let's see how that's going to work. Yeah, that works fine. <laughs> I think everybody's weather's been a little wacky here too. We were, I was waiting to put the hummingbird feeders out because they usually show up around the second week of April here in our area. And I thought, they're not going to have any food 
I don't get them out soon, but I wasn't going to put them out when it's uh, still freezing and we've had frost and freeze warnings for the last two weeks. So I finally put some out yesterday. My husband planted 30 trees, pines, or I, guess, I think he said white pines, uh, plum, and red, uh, redbud trees. I love redbud trees. I like, I like the color when they're blooming because it's kind of a purpley color. And I like the way they're shaped. I, I just like them. So he couldn't find any out in the woods, so he actually had to order some. So he got 30 trees and came home from work one day and went out there and planted them all. Now he does not procrastinate. <laughs> I guess it's a good thing that one of us doesn't. I don't know, maybe Friday when we're um, working on our journals uh, at Melody's, maybe I will paint because I really need to get myself in gear and get those dresses worked on. So that'll give me, that'll be my reward. Ooh, tomato sauce. Yeah, it is, Barb. Okay, I hope it turns out well. Thanks for stopping by. Hadn't talked to you in a while. I'm not going to be on here too much longer. I need to go figure out what I'm doing for supper and throw in some laundry probably, let the dog out. This looks so dirty what I'm working on right now because of the pencil as I drew the lines on with pencil and as I'm sewing it's smearing the pencil around so it makes it look pretty nasty. I don't know if you can see it or not but it doesn't really matter it'll be covered with paint. Okay last stitch. Let's see that part. Looks pretty good. <coughs> Those can stick up a little bit or not. Can go all the way down in there. Either way. And then once this is glued down, this is all going to be, you know, I don't want them in there too far because then it won't lay flat. So they have to stick up a little bit like I started. So, so when, once this is all glued down, it'll be flat. This part will be flat. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do this one. That's pretty straight.
So I cut it. Um, I try to get one side to where the threads are straight. In this case, it was this side. And then um, cut it to where I think it's straight on the other side. And then fringe it. And any fringe that's, that's uneven, trim it off. And that way I get a straight squared piece. So both ends are fringed straight across and both sides are fringed straight across. So <clears throat> I think I'm gonna make these corners round. Where's my central? <coughs> Oh, my fingernails look so bad. I'll go tomorrow to get them done. This is what I hate is the underside when they start growing out. That's what happens. I have to go in and clean that out. But you can see how much it's grown out. I go every three weeks. Really? I have plenty of time to grow. I think they'd rather you go every two weeks, but I spend enough money on it as it is. <laughs> okay, so. Let me just draw me a line. Stay in the line. Oh, yeah, and I have to put a... I should have done the eyelet first before I cut it out because sometimes it draws up the fabric. But just do what we can do. I think I'll just use a silver one because it's going to get painted over anyway. I hope this works. May not, but sometimes if you want to keep the fabric from going down into the hole, where am I? Here, put something stiffer behind it. It should still cut, but it, it, it'll it's. It's not going to tear the fabric as much, hopefully. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And this is what the pocket watch is going to hook to. That's why I'm putting this on here. And that didn't work. Sometimes I'm not strong enough to do it. Oh my word. <laughs> Still didn't work. Okay. That guy. Right, I have so many of those left because they don't work very well. So what I want to do, these are the ones I like right here. So I'm going to use them. Try that again. There we go. Hi, Chris. Yeah, that's good. Okay. All right. 
this way, throw that away, these away so I don't dump them out. And I'm going to sew this pocket on. And that's probably the end of what I'm going to do today. Because it's getting late in the day. So let's put this here so I can get an idea of what I think I want to do. That's there. I think I want this right in the center. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. How you been, Chris? Did you have a good time in the sale the past weekend? I did. What part I got to see? Uh. Now, this may pose a little bit of a problem later whenever I'm painting. I'm going to have to lift that pocket up a little bit and try to get paint inside it. But it'll be all right. <coughs> and I'm going to go double thread again on this. And then that's all I'm going to do on this today. Got to get my, find my um keys and uh, see how I'm gonna like them decide if I'm gonna put them on there or not if I don't put them on hers then I'll put them on his you want to craft a chicken soup <laughs> I used to do a lot of canning I haven't done that in years Not very culinary minded, so to speak. I'm just going to follow this little line I drew on here. When I was, went to town to go to the doctor this morning, after I was done, I drove by the pickleball court to see if my granddaughter was out there playing. And I got to watch her play a couple games before they were done, before I headed home. They were about uh, 40 minutes away, which is also where we used to live and where our doctors are and stuff, some of them. Well, that was fun. I got to see her for a few minutes and her dad. Thanks, Chris. Do you even know what it is, Chris? Since you got here late, do you have a clue? <laughs> Excuse me. I think, you know, I, last night I was afraid that maybe I was coming down with bronchitis. But I really think what it might be. Ow, wow, that hurt. What I really think it might be is they've been, uh, the forestry service, has been doing a controlled burn 
of about 2,900 acres. And it's in the air, it's all around, you know. And I think maybe that's what's affecting me because I have a really bad reaction to um, mold, mildew, smoke. Leaf smoke is almost the worst. It just takes my breath away. So I kind of have a feeling maybe that's what is affecting me. Pickleball is, uh, it's kind of a new game. It's been around for a few years, but um, anybody can play pickleball that's able to, you know, that's mobile. That, that's able, anybody who's, I can't because of my back and my knees, but um, little kids can play, older people can play. It's a great, it's a great game. It's kind of like a mix between tennis, badminton, and um, um, what's the other thing I want to say? Tennis and badminton. Pretty much tennis and badminton, I guess, is the, the mix of it. The story is it was created by some people who were just playing this game that they figured out to play at home, I guess, or wherever they were. And I think that they had a dog named Pickles. And the dog loved to play, you know, like to play when they were playing. So they started calling it pickleball. Now, I think that's the right story. It might not be totally true, but that's pretty cool. But um, it's played on a court that's it will fit inside of a tennis court. It's small, a little smaller and uh, has a has a little bit lower net. Well, the net might be pretty close to a tennis net, but I think it's a little bit lower, maybe. And you can play singles or doubles. And it basically has its own rules of hitting the ball back and forth to each other. That's what it is. But it is becoming like the number one growing sport in the United States. And our state, Missouri, is one of the biggest growing states that has the biggest growing uh, pickleball players or whatever. You go to Florida and they might have 50 or more courts, um, pickleball courts, where you can, you know, all at one uh, place. And um, a lot of the Ys and uh, different parks and different things are putting in pickleball courts outside. So you can play inside or outside. And uh, it's just something that's fun to play. So it's getting to be a big sport, so much so that now they have a, in, in a couple of weeks, they have a U.S. Pickleball Open competition in Naples, Florida. My granddaughter's going. This will be her first time. She's, like I said, she's 13. Her dad is an official uh, referee. He, he studied to be a referee. So he, he does that. And it's sort of like a family thing now. She she would like to be a professional pickleball player. They don't make gobs of money, but you know, the high the high, the ones who are the world champs, they don't do too bad. It's not like big tennis players making stuff, but I think eventually it will be that. A lot of tennis players are playing pickleball. Yeah, it's fun. I I tried it one time. I just couldn't do it because. I, I have very bad balance. I have very bad knees. I have bad back and blah, blah, blah. And I managed to play one game and I would have liked to have played more, you know. But um, it's so fun to see these 80-year-old guys out there playing pickleball and having the time of their lives. So they have um, ratings. Um, I think the highest rating is a six. And I think Olivia is probably about a 3.5 right now. And um, when she goes to the open, she'll be playing um, with uh, kids up to, I think 18 is the, the high end. And, but they can be any bracket, you know, they could be fives or twos or, I mean, fives or threes or whatever. So this will be a real good, uh, experience for her and if she doesn't get on the ball and get her practicing done get serious and she's not going to do well but they play well they played yesterday all day 
and she was there playing this morning. They have an outdoor court there. And it's really funny because um, the first tournament she played in, she, I think she had just turned 13, or maybe it wasn't quite 13. I can't remember now. She either just turned it or wasn't quite 13. And her partner was uh, in his 80s. So she was the youngest one playing and he was the oldest and they were playing mixed partners. So that was pretty cool. And they won the gold, you know. <laughs> so, yeah, she's really loving it. Um, actually, they have a lot of it on YouTube. Just look up pickleball on YouTube and you can see them play. They just, they had over the weekend, they had, I don't know if it's national, no, regionals or nationals or some such thing. Some big deal they were watching. And um, they had a uh, tournament in where, just down the street from where my daughter lives, where my granddaughter lives. Last uh, summer it was one of the few ones they had, but they didn't cancel. So that was her first. Um, oh, that's about more to do. That was her first tournament, and she got gold there, uh, gold medal there for playing. And she was playing with well, obviously everybody was older than her, and most of them were my age, even older. And there were some younger people, you know, in their 30s and 40s and stuff. But um, it it hasn't caught on, at least in this area. It's just catching on with some of the younger people. There are a lot of younger people that play, but um, I think in the next year or so, they're going to have to change their category, age categories, you know, because they'll have enough people, enough young people to where they have to have different, more categories. But it's like any other sport, you know, it's already started to cost a lot to go to the tournaments and stuff. So, so we've figured out a few things that she could do to make money because she wants to, if she, if she gets, if she gets a medal in the regional, I mean, in the uh, open, I think this is how it works. If she gets a medal in the open, she's automatically, I think she can automatically go to the uh, regionals or nationals. I don't know. I can't keep track of it all. Anyway, she wants to raise money. So she'll have money to go if she gets to go. <laughs> Because the next one she wants to go to is in California. So that's pretty much, you know, it gets to be pretty expensive. And you have to pay a fee, you know, an entry fee and all that kind of stuff. She had some kid, some boy from, uh, I don't know, I, I think he's from Michigan or somewhere. Because they, they put their stats online and then if somebody wants wants them for a partner, you know, they can request and ask them, do they want to partner with them on the doubles? So she's partnering, partnering, part, partnering. I can't even say that. <laughs> she's going to be partners <laughs> with this uh, other young man <coughs> for the Open. And they've never played together before. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully they'll get some time to practice together before they have to play. But that's just the way it works sometimes, you know. She was playing with the women today when I was there watching her. Four women were playing together. And uh, of course, she's the only young one there. She's always out there playing with these 70 year olds, you know, and they just love her. They think she's just it. I told those ladies this morning, I said, make her work. She needs to practice. So they got with it and had her running around. But she was tired because they played all day yesterday. And she said, Randy, I'm tired. I'm done playing for today. <coughs> okay, now, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> okay. 
Okay, so that's gonna go there. Hmm. Could make that a little V shape like this, I guess. I'll wait and see what I think. So there we go. <coughs> Kind of see how it's going to look. Now this, of course, is going to be painted, and it's going to be in browns and maybe some rusty colors and what have you. So it'll look a lot different from this. Hopefully, it's going to look like, if not leather, at least some kind of old fabric. You know, I don't think it'll look like leather, but so we'll be all of that, <coughs> and then. Uh, We'll have a little chain or ribbon or something here, and it'll have where those go. You know, the more I think about this, the less I want to put those keys on here. But look at these little keys. I've got all these really cute little keys. I could put them on the chain because the chain will hang sort of like this. You can hang some of these on the little chain. They could dangle down with the, I don't know where that stuff went. I just had it here. What did I do with it? Here it is. With a couple, you know, like a couple of. So like a little ribbon here. Maybe. Maybe a little cup hanging off of here. Because remember, this is going to be the ladies. Maybe one of these with the roses. <clears throat> it could go anywhere, really. And maybe. Hmm. Something. I might end up doing that instead of putting the big keys on this one. And then put the large keys on his because I'm I need some ideas for his. This is gonna have have more mechanical things on it. I want to make a mechanical looking bug, but I don't know if the cover would be the right well, it might have to go on the cover in order to fit in the book. But it would be something similar, you know, pockets or little things, whatever. So I'm going to quit and, oh, <laughs> I thought you <laughs> you mean about the pickleball? <laughs> no, this is going to be my steampunk cover, I hope. That's what it'll look like. Have to decide what I'm going to put inside the watch. If I'm going to try to put a face in it or a picture or something like that. Oh, Janet from across the sea. Hi, Janet. I keep seeing your uh, streams and I haven't got to watch the last two. And they're still sitting there waiting for me. So I'm going to watch them. These are really cute keys. Wow. I like them. Look at that. They feel nice in my hand, too. Cute, cute, cute. So I could 
could do these. <clears throat> I'll have to think about that. I'm not sure about that. You have to wait for these ideas to percolate. Percolate. And see what comes up. And I think I have decided that uh, inside the journal, which will be like this. Just like that. So that's how it's going to look. And I usually put a little folio inside of this pocket because I've made a couple of them using these um, folders. So I usually make this into a pocket and then um, I put a folio in here that has some stuff in it. But I got this idea the other day. I think I'm going to do a letter and make it look like an old letter. Maybe use my calligraphy, my copper plate calligraphy. Who knows? We'll have to see how that works. But um, yeah, something like that. So I guess I'm going to have to say goodbye for today. And um, I'll be back working on this on Friday um, at Melody Maid's stream, where we've been collaborating on our uh, steampunk books. And um, so I might, not sure what I'm going to do. I might be putting this on the cardboard so my cover is together so it can be painted. Just depends on how much time I have and what else I decide to do. Or I might even work on another one for the for the for the guy. This is the ladies. I'll just show you these real quick. I know you've probably already seen them on Melodies, but I've been working on them a little bit. So here's the ladies, and this is going to be her journal. So the first thing you open up, you're going to see her in there. So I think, um, and it's going to have roses. Uh, roses and steampunk stuff. So, um, yeah, I wanted to incorporate the roses because I like roses. So, there's two signatures for hers. So, that's going to work out nice. And then I also have. Here's my gentleman. So he'll have more uh, mechanical things, you know, clocks and gears and stuff like that in his. And she'll have some of that, but she'll have more roses and uh, maybe writing types of stuff and, you know, more feminine stuff in hers. Okay. Um, hope you all have a good evening. And thanks, Janet, Chris, all of you who have shown up. Um, I appreciate you coming by, and sorry for the coughing, but it's better than it was this morning, so hopefully that's a good sign, and I will see you Friday, hopefully, if not, if not before then. Thanks for coming. Bye-bye.